welcome to the Read Local Show presented by Lit Carney Bell and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I'm so excited to share today's guest with you. Bethany Wallace writes devotionals for mothers. Let's meet Bethany Wallace. All right. I'm so glad to be hanging out with you today, Bethany. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I was excited that you asked me to do this. I know. I, you, I, I've always enjoyed your blog. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to kind of share you with the world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and just tell everybody a little bit about yourself before we get into like the questions and everything. Okay, sure. Um, I am Bethany Wallace and I'm an author just for fun. And then I also um, have a blog, gratitudecup.com. And I um, got just really feel compelled to share what I'm grateful for and sort of the process that I've walked through becoming more grateful. And so some of my writing has really stemmed from, from that blog that I started like 11 years ago. Um, and I have a daughter who is nine years old and she's definitely the joy in light of my life. Yeah, I live in Arkansas, so that's a little bit about me. Cool. All right. Well, I um I would just like to say that um, your gratitude blog has meant a lot to me over the years. Um, I've you know contributed a few times. Thank you so much for letting me do that. And so um, I know you have a couple of books that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But first, I always start out. Um, kind of focusing on reading. I consider myself a reading advocate. I feel like everybody should read more. So that's where we're going to start with. Um, I have a couple of questions here. I understand you have a, a Facebook readers group. And so these questions came from there. So the first question that I have is, which Christian writers are you fond of? Okay. Um, I there are, I always fluctuate between writers, you know, I mean, I think anybody's like that, whether you're reading nonfiction or fiction. Um, so right now I'm really reading a lot of John Piper and, um, Corey Ten Boom. Those are sort of my, the two that I'm focused on right now, but I also really love John Eldridge. Um, and I think I've read every single book that he's written so far. Um, I just, feel very inspired by the way he writes and he's pretty down to earth. Um, and when you're lo looking at Christian authors, at least, especially like for nonfiction, I feel like it for me, because I have been through real life and life hasn't just been all a bed of roses. I like to find writers who sort of speak from that place also. And, um, don't just paint like a perfect little picture of, of everything. So that's kind of why those three writers really, I think, resonate with me a lot. Cool. So on kind of piggybacking off of that, I also have a question here that said, that asked, um, who is your favorite poet? Hmm. Okay. So my favorite, um, is probably, um, this poet that's not very well known. Her name's Joanna Veronica Warwick, and she is Polish. And I heard her speak um, or do a reading. She did like a reading of her poems um, when I was in, no, I was in high school. I was a senior oh, in high school, okay. but she did that reading at Lyon College where I later attended. And I was like mesmerized by her. I thought, and, and probably she's my favorite because her writing is what got me really interested in writing poetry myself. Nice. Um, so I love her. Yeah. That's cool that not only do you like her work, but you actually got to see her read and it inspired yeah. you to write. So that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so the last question that I have, this is just a question for me. I just, um, I'm always curious. I always ask some type of personal reading question, but you know, nothing too out there. <laughs> um, what was the last book you read and enjoyed? Oh, um, Okay, this is embarrassing probably to admit, but I am horrible at only reading like half of books unless they're really, really good. Um, so honestly, probably the last thing I read that I was crazy about was uh, one of the Ramona books. I don't know if you've ever read the Beverly. I love those but books. <laughs> yeah, I, I had, I got my daughter into reading those. Um, and at first she was kind of, I know the language is different than the way that we talk now, um, yeah. like even the term cross, she had never heard you, you know, people say 
she's so cross or you're acting so cross. And so now she goes around the house telling me and dad that we're acting cross. Um, <laughs> but we've been reading those. So I think we're on Ramona the Brave right now. We're not reading them in order, just like as we come across them and ordering them on Amazon and things like that. Um, so, and her teacher has some in her personal collection. And so she's been loaning those to Maggie too. So yeah, I, I love um, like young adult fiction and children's fiction and stuff like that. I took a class on that in college and I had no idea I was going to like that class so much. And it kind of kickstarted a collection for me too. So that's, that's really cool. I, I think for me, I'll, I'll just say this real quick. I know that the first chapter book that I read by myself from beginning to end was a Ramona book. So Aww. I can totally feel the love for the Ramona <laughs> series here. Yes. So um, I think that's so cool. Um, the, the last like book that you remember like really enjoying reading was was one of the Ramona books so I love that <laughs> yeah I tried to read Thomas Wolf um to something like look homeward angel or something I'm probably butchering that title but I was like I need to read some more like classic serious adult literature so I took it to my bedroom and I got like one chapter in and I was like wow I'm falling asleep here so <laughs> I just, I don't like to just read things just because I'm supposed to read, you know, because everybody else has read them or they're on a top 100 list or something. Um, so yeah, I'm always looking for just stuff that grabs me. And, and I think the older I get, like, I like lighter reading more than I used to. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's just enjoyable, there's a happy ending. So I think young adult fiction is perfect for me right now. And with everything going on in the world, it's like the world is serious enough, you know, yeah, yeah. So. And, and I'm so glad that you said that because that is totally in line with like my whole, you know, vision of being like this reading advocate is that I'm, I want people to know that they can read whatever they want. They don't have to read what society is telling them that they have to read. It's okay if you want to read a picture book. If that picture book speaks to you, read it, you know? Right. So I love that. All right, so now we're going to move into the segment that I call the open book, and this is where we get to talk about you as a writer a little bit. Okay. Um, so again, some questions from your readers group I'm going to start with. Um, I have, what are your general writing motivations? Like, why do you write? Well, I think that would probably depend on the genre for me. Um, because, you know, I do business writing for as a freelance writer and for my business blog. So that kind of writing uh, is just motivated by building my business and making money. And but also if I'm writing about something that helps job seekers or something, then, um, you know, I generally genuinely do want to help people through whatever I'm writing. That's probably the top motivation overall, no matter the genre. Poetry is like so creative for me that I have never, I've never forced myself to try to sit down and finish a poem or like when I published a poetry collection, I didn't, it was just like um, a byproduct of the writing I'd done. It wasn't like I set a goal, like I'm going to write a poem every day until I'm done with this thing. Um, it doesn't work that way for me very well with poetry. Um, it's probably the most challenging thing that I write really because of the, you know, economy of words, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but then like things that I write about for my blog, just for fun or f about my daughter, like in my uh, mama meditations books, those, that kind of writing uh, comes to me really more easily. And I can, I can sort of give myself assignments like, okay, what, which topic about raising a kid have I not covered yet? Oh, that, that, and that. And then I just try to think of like a memory or, you know, an experience that fits with it and, and write it. So um, I think that's sort of, maybe that covers two things, like what inspires me and then also what motivates me. Um, and just really genuinely to help people to share my experiences, because I just know for myself, I learn best from shared experiences, um, of other people. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why I think reading is so important, um, because I think people miss out on a lot of experiences by not opening books because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love movies and television and, you know, radio just as much as the next person. But like you said, those shared experiences, unless you're able to like sit down and talk with a bunch of different people, 
books is the next best way to get those experiences and apply them to your life as either cautionary tales or inspiration or what have you. So um, I love that, <laughs> that, that, you know, that's kind of part of your motivation for writing. Yeah. And the stuff that I've read the best or that I like the best that I've read. Um, like one time I took this class on Southern autobiography and um, it was mostly stories of um, like around the early 1900s, like sort of, I guess, post-Civil War, but not quite to the point where, um, you know, it was a civil rights movement. And those stories that I read a the ones that were really well written and really vivid about just what these people went through completely. I feel like it helped me imagine what it was like better, you know, than just like watching the movie about there's lots of movies out there about like you were saying. Um, and you can't go back and talk to people who lived through that time because honestly, most of them aren't with us anymore. So reading those helped me a lot. And then now when people say things to me like, and have I, what I consider like an inaccurate perception of that time. Um, I'm like, well, that doesn't really fit with, like I read what someone wrote who actually lived through that. And this is what it was like. Yeah. Um, so I love that. I love, I love it when people take the time, you know, that's really a gift, like for anybody to take the time and write, especially write out hard things like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my next question was um, kind of in line with that. So I'm going to come up with something off the top of my head real quick. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it, was, it was more about your motive. Actually, I guess I'll still ask it and see if maybe there's a difference. But I wanted okay. to know what specifically inspired you to write your Mama Meditation series. Because we're going to talk about that series more in just a minute. But I, I know there's two volumes in that series. And um, so what made you wanted to write Meditations for Mothers? Um, honestly, I don't know why I started writing those. That's the truth. I just, and when I first started writing them, um, if you've read the books or just like looked through like the little sneak peek on Kindle, it's, there's like a meditation, which is basically almost all of them are like stories or mm -hmm. my thoughts on something and a shared experience. And then at the bottom, there's a Bible verse and a prayer prompt. And I added those two things later. Um, that was, I started adding that stuff after I had the idea that, oh, this could actually, I could actually like turn these into books. But when I first started writing them, um, I was just thinking maybe I'll use these as blog posts or save them for my daughter to read later. Um, and then, and I did post some of them on my blog early on and got really a good response. Like some other moms would say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you wrote that because I've struggled with that same thing. Like one of them is about like being embarrassed about your own kid and no, nobody wants to talk about that. Right. Um, you know, it feels shameful to admit you're embarrassed about, of, of your kid, you know, but every mom has that feeling. So, um, yeah, I guess that's sort of motivated me. And then also a lot of those books has to do with recovery, um, like the 12 step process and which is my life. So, um, I think it was kind of also, I, I okay, well, one thing at this just, I, I did notice there's a shortage of books for specifically for moms in recovery related to parenting. Um, really, there's probably a shortage of parenting books in general, who like for people who are in recovery. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing I was like, man, somebody needs to, me and a, fr a friend of mine who's a, a mom in the same 12 step program we were talking and she was like, I can't find anything about other moms. And, and the, the issue, if you're, if you ever go to a 12 step meeting, you can go to open meeting, just listen to people is a lot of people um, don't come into recovery until their kids are older. Right. Um, and so if you don't have recovery under your belt and you're trying to raise kids, but you really need the recovery, then you're probably not the best parent. And so you don't have a lot of like, a lot of things to share about, okay, this is a program principle or recovery principle, and this is how I apply it to being a parent. Um, so unless you were in recovery before you started parenting, right? and there just aren't that many people like that. Um, and I guess the ones that are out there haven't sat down, haven't sat down and, and written it out. So, so that was a, that was one motivation that 
like people people like me need what I wrote you know you know I'm it's so funny I'm glad that you I'm having this conversation with you because um I'm not a mom but I have six wonderful nieces and nephews that I adore um not all from the same person <laughs> and I work with kids and so I have the first volume of the series and I've, and I've read through it a little bit and hearing you say that it it all of a sudden it makes more sense to me I didn't even think about reading it from a recovery um you know from perspective but yeah that I'm so glad um that you had that specifically in mind yes of course this could help any mother but especially if there's a mother who's struggling with something like that this is for them I think that's yeah. wonderful yeah oh wow <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> like I mean that was great sorry <laughs> that's okay um I did have one other question this is gonna um make things a little bit lighter <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, as part of your writing process, is there any particular like technology or software or anything like that that they use that helps with your process? Oh, I'm really not a fan of technology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I will say I love Zoom because I started working from home in 2015 and before Zoom was cool. And so I'm a big fan of it because it's the best platform out there, in my opinion, for video conferencing and mm -hmm. Being able to like, sometimes I do presentations for people and being able to share your screen really easily mm -hmm. and it not be something cumbersome. You have to go through all these steps. And so I love Zoom for that reason. Um, and I think as far as for writing, I, I honestly use just like straight up Microsoft Word. Um, I like the track changes feature in it. Mm -hmm. the best of, you know, I mean, sometimes I'll use Google Docs for other with clients. I don't like it as well. Um, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because I've worked more with Word, but um, yeah, I'm pretty, I keep it pretty simple. I use Canva for like promotional things um, because I am not a graphic designer and Canva is perfect for people like me. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> Canva <laughs> helps a lot. <laughs> yes. All right. So that was, um, you know, talking a little bit about your writing process. So now we get to talk about the books. Okay. Yay. So the first thing um, this is um, that I'm going to ask about is, um, again, these are questions from your reading group. And so I loved this question when I saw it. It says, how do your kids feel about you mentioning them in the Mama, Medi Mama Meditation series? Hmm, good question. Well, <laughs> okay. So if I'll, I'll just what spoiler alert is I have Maggie who's nine but then also I have Liz who is my former stepdaughter and she is 26 okay and um which is blowing me away but anyway <laughs> so Liz I have been more careful about writing things about her um because and there was a lot I could write but um just to protect her anonymity more. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't want to cover that stuff. And also, you know, a lot of my experiences with her, like I, I met her when she was five. That's when, well, I, did, I met her when she was three. I got married to her dad when she was five and then we got divorced when she was 11. And so um, we went through some very difficult times as a family and it's just a little too personal, I feel. Um, it would, doesn't bother me to share that stuff. And I sh sometimes share those experiences personally, one-on-one -on -one with people, or like if I'm speaking to a recovery group because it's not recorded and, you know. Um, but in writing, I don't feel comfortable doing that about, about some of that stuff. Um, and, but about Maggie, Maggie loves being featured. She's a little ham. <laughs> Um, she calls them the Maggie books and she wanted her own copy to keep in her bedroom Aww. and um, she's read some of it, but she hasn't read most of it. And, but ever, sometimes she will come to me if she reads one of them, like the one I was talking about where I said I was embarrassed by something she did. Um, and she's like, did you seriously get embarrassed by me? Um, it, like she can't believe that I have normal feelings like a normal person, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's been good. It sparked a lot of good conversations with us and 
um, I think it's kind of made us closer. And I love the idea that someday when she gets older, she might, you know, really appreciate them a lot more, like really read them and, and maybe even use the stuff in it. I don't know. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't um, written anything that personal yet. Um, Cause you know, I mostly write fiction, but I have put a lot of personal things into it that other family members have picked up on and be like, oh, I know what that is. I know what this is. And they've been okay with it. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. I like their Emily Dickinson said, uh, tell the truth, but tell it slant. Yeah. And um, that's, I do that a lot in the Mama Meditation series. Honestly, it's, it's pretty straight up. Like if it says that that's what happened, but in poetry, that's what I usually do because there are some of my poems that are about like really serious, deep, sad things. Um, but I'm not, I don't put it all out there. Like, like every detail is completely accurate to reality. You know, yeah. I might be inspired by a situation that I went through, but I'm not going to just like lay it all out and call people by their real names or, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Which I think um, this brings me to the next question here is we've um, mentioned the Mama Meditation series, but you have another book that I'd like to know a little bit about. I mean, I already know about it, but I want everybody else to know about it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Hindsight? Okay, so Hindsight 2020 is my poetry collection. Oh, I have one right here. I have, I really don't have all my books sitting there, by the way, but this one I was just using the other day. You can see it's like all messed up. Um, but I love that. That was the first book I, that I published. And I was very intimidated by the publishing process. I got to tell you, like, um, it seemed daunting to me and cumbersome in terms of the, the process and like the technology involved. And I thought I had to do it all myself and all these things. Um, I just said, I really didn't know that much about it, but I was just letting my fear keep me from doing it for a long time, I think. Um, and then I talked to a friend who ended up being the one who helped me um, with the Mama Meditation series. And she has published a lot of romance novels okay. and she, like tons of them. And she's so good at it. Now she helps other people with the publishing process. Okay. And so when she was just describing to me how really it's very simple I was like oh my gosh um so then I started on that poetry collection which really I had already it's it's a new and selected collection so there are some that I wrote 20 years ago and then just edited them or revised them mm -hmm. um and then there are some of the poems in there that are really recent you know like a few months before I published the poem I finished that one or whatever um it's a really a collection. I guess I entitled it hindsight 2020 because, um, it was the year 2020 mm -hmm. and because I had so much time because of COVID to mm -hmm. sit around and think and go through old journals and look through these poems. I mean, I would declutter like a boss during 2020, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and so that when I was going through all those, then I was like, these are actually good. I should probably really share them with people. So that prompted me to write that collection or, or publish it you know bring it all together yeah. um and it was fulfilling that was a fulfilling book for me um and so much personal stuff is in it um that some people who have read it who are friends of mine are like I cannot believe that you put all this stuff in there I'm like I don't care it's just my life I mean <laughs> it's not like <laughs> uh and I think it's sort of you know, like in recovery, we always say like, you can laugh about it if you're healed from it. Yeah. Um, if you haven't healed from it, it's not funny. Um, and so a lot of the poems in there, it's like things that I went through that at the time I was probably mortified for anyone to ever know. And now I'm like, I don't care. Maybe somebody will, you know, I think poetry is great about helping people. Not necessarily, I mean, not that you can't learn from poetry, but it's not about that to me. It's more about like having a moment um, when you're reading a poem, when you're like, you get it or you relate to it, um, you get the feeling that's in it, you know, yeah. um, and it, so that's, that's what I hope people get from poetry for, from the poetry I write anyway. Yeah, I, I definitely 
I know that poetry is one of the things I've always struggled with, <laughs> um, but I do find that um, when it comes to conveying a particular feeling or an emotion, like you said, like when you get it, mm -hmm. I feel like poetry is the best at doing that. Of course, you know, there are stories that you can read, nonfiction and fiction, and it'll put you in that kind of same situation. But if you're just looking for that like emotional connection, you totally get that with poetry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so the next question that I wanna ask is a little kind of silly, but right along the lines here. I know I have kind of like <laughs> my dream visions about um, certain things. So let's say you get to plan your ideal book signing where you're going to be, I don't know, maybe featuring all of your books. Like what, what does that look like to you? <laughs> it just reminded me of when I was a kid and I would be mad at my mom and then I would, um, plan my funeral in my head. I don't know if you ever did that as a kid, but I'd be like, she'd be so sad if I died. And then all the people would come to my funeral and love seeing me. <laughs> um, so I guess my ideal book signing is kind of like that only for a good reason, but because there's always that, I always have those times at, and I've only done two book signings, but at both book signing. Um, and that's partly because of COVID because yeah when my poetry book came out like nobody wants nobody was making it avail an available option to host things like that you know right um but I, I did one that was actually in February of 2021 I think that's right mm -hmm. um and it was at a Christian bookstore and um so most of the people who came were coming because of the mom and meditations books not the poetry book which is fine um and they, it was mostly people who I knew really well, um, like, like a woman that I'm friends with her daughter, but the daughter doesn't live here, but she does. And so she came to get one sign. And then, um, some of my best, best friends came, a couple of my family members came, um, and it was a small group, but it was like, I had a connection with every single person, except for like a few little pe people who were just happened to be at the store and then they bought one, which was cool too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think if I could like multiply that by four, then that would be like the perfect book sign, you know, where not, I don't really care about selling so many books as it is like, just, it's so great to hear directly from readers about I read this, and this is how it helped me, or I read this and it made me think of this, or just knowing that people, that what all that time you spent writing a book is actually doing some kind of good or helping somebody. Um, that's such the best feeling, I think, as a writer. I think I, I totally agree with that. I've done a handful of signings and I think, you know, making that connection with the reader is the best part about it. Even, even if, cause I've had ones that have not gone so well, <laughs> but is, if there was one person there who was like excited about the work, I, that made it all the difference. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So now we're going to be moving into kind of the silly part of this interview. Okay. Um, not really silly, but these are questions that don't necessarily have anything to do specifically with your work, um, getting to know you a little bit, but um, some of them are very light, some of them are a little deeper, but we're just gonna get into it. Okay. So um, I'm gonna start with a light question. <laughs> have you ever bungee jumped or would you? Mm. No, <laughs> no and no. I am like, okay, I broke my leg in seventh grade. Um, and it was a really bad break, like from the process of the first cast till the air cast was off was like almost six months. And as a kid, you know, that was horrible. It was horrible. The worst summer ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so because of that experience, I really shy away from things that I feel like could even remotely be risk of injury. Um, I'm just hesitant. I won't say I never do anything like that, but like when I think before then I was a lot more rambunctious and willing to just jump off a cliff into the water or something. Now I'm like, no way. I don't want to ever be in a cast again for six months ever. I think that's a legitimate answer. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to do it. My husband does it. And every time I pray Ugh. because I'm just like, no, no, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, to each his own. <laughs> I also feel like I'm that person who 
everyone else I know could bungee jump and have the most fun experience and nothing go wrong. And I would be the person that the rope snaps or <laughs> <laughs> the harness doesn't work or something. Because that's my life. <laughs> I feel you on that one. <laughs> so the next question is um, a little bit heavier, but I, I think it's perfectly in line with the way this whole conversation has gone, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, I want to talk about some of the contributing factors because you talk about recovery. And so I, I know a little bit about the 12 step process. I haven't personally gone through, it, but I know people who have. And so what I want to know is um, what are factors that contribute to your ability to forgive when you've been wronged? Hmm. Good one. Okay. So well, the steps have helped me a lot with that, I will say. Um, probably a combination of like working through the steps to forgive and then also just my personal relationship with God, which which recovery has helped. It's definitely brought me closer to God than I was before. Um, and sort of let God be God. That's what recovery has really helped me with because before it was like I was in charge. I just gave God a to-do list. and. Um, hoped that he got everything done on his list. Um, <laughs> and that wasn't a very uh, effective relationship, you know, because I was missing the fact that he was really capable and trustworthy and all those things. And I relied way too much on myself um, before I went through the, the steps. Um, but this, the steps specifically, I mean, I feel like if anyone is in any recovery program, doesn't matter what it is, if it involves the 12 steps, then that's one of the biggest things you get out of it is being able to identify the ways that you've been wrong, that maybe you haven't been comfortable talking about before or opening up about, and then also figuring out how you've wronged other people, you know, and I think that's been a big part of forgiveness for me is um, identifying those times when I messed up and when I hurt other people and I did something wrong, um, because it makes me more, um, empathetic, I guess, to yeah. people when they do something wrong to me. Um, and even looking back in retrospect, it's like, well, yes, that it was wrong that he did that, but, um, I, ha I can have compassion, at least as a fellow human, knowing like I've screwed up a million times and I'm glad that people have forgiven me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, I think that having that realization, as you say, is, is important because I know there have been times in my past where if you did something to me, you were just, you know, dead to me, you know, mm -hmm. and it took me a long time to look at myself in the mirror and say that I've done things and people have forgiven me. And I, I do think you, like you said, it, it helps with, um, I can't remember the word that you used, um, compassion, no. Empathy. Empathy, oh. yes, yeah. empathy, yes. Because um, I'm not saying that it's easy, but if you can, you know, realize that you've been forgiven, it makes it a little bit easier for you to forgive someone else. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it also helped me. This is something I did not know till. Well, I mean, I think I probably heard it, but I didn't. Um, it did not resonate with me, you know, and change how I was acting until I was in recovery. And that is that forgiveness and trust aren't the same things. And I thought if I forgave you, then I had to trust you again or open myself back up to a relationship with you again or reconcile. And those things don't have anything to do with each other, but I didn't know I could forgive someone. Um, and that was really about something between me and God more than anything else, you know, and that it didn't mean I had to call the person up and tell them I forgave them at all. You know, they never even had to know what I was doing. I mean, sometimes I've done that, but sometimes I haven't. Right. Um, so that was a big, good lesson for me. That's cool. I like that. All right. I have one more question. going to end things on a lighter note here. Um, so I always have a handful of questions that are just off the wall and this is one of them. <laughs> okay. So um, you only get to pick one. What's it going to be? Ooh. Potato chips, corn chips, or popcorn? That is really hard. Um, 
when you say corn chips, do you, so, <laughs> do you mean like, tortilla it, chips or Fritos? See, it, I knew you were going to say that. So <laughs> in my mind, they're the same, but I, people have argued to me that they are not the same, but I'm like, they're both corn based chips. So you decide. Okay. <laughs> Okay, of all of those, tortilla chips is definitely my favorite, if they're good. You know, I mean, there's some bad tortilla chips out there, but yeah. like the good ones, restaurant, the ones you get at like um, a Mexican restaurant or whatever, those like the thin and crunchy ones. Yeah. yeah. See, it's crazy. If you had asked me this question maybe 10 years ago, I might have said the same thing. Um, I was on like an anti popcorn phase for like um, many years because my mom made me eat so much popcorn as a kid <laughs> but like now that's what I would totally go for would be popcorn <laughs> well that's my second choice and I was kind of torn about it because we make popcorn from from scratch you know mm-hmm. um, like on the stove and it's I love it I can make it I'll make a bowl of it and I eat the whole thing which is at least it's not like a super you know terrible food for you but I just love homemade popcorn. I'm not, I'm not so, I used to love the kind from a bag too, you know, um, but I'm kind of gotten away from that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. (laughs) So we're corn people. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, um, I have so much enjoyed this. Um, It's been such a good time talking with you. Go ahead and tell the viewers where they can find you online. Okay, sure. So. you can find all of my books and information about the books, like some of the readings and things like that at, on my Amazon author page. And really the easiest way to do that is just Google Amazon author, Bethany Wallace, um, rather than try to remember a link or anything. <laughs> and then also gratitudecup.com is my blog that, um, and, and on that site, there's a bookstore if you want a signed copy and there's a link to my podcast and lots of great blogs from myself and guest writers like toy. Um, (laughs) so yeah, you can find some really good stuff on, on that site and it's, uh, you can sign up for a newsletter too, which probably only goes out about once every month or maybe every two months. Awesome. That's great. All right. So everyone be sure to stick around for the credits. I always have something fun there. And to my Patreon supporters, Bethany has some extra content just for you. But we have reached the end. So until next time, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading. Thank you.